morning. Today I want to talk about saxophone assembly, putting a saxophone together without damaging the instrument. When instruments are damaged, <laughs> that normally happens when we're putting them together or taking them apart. That's the most dangerous time. So generally, saxophone's fairly easy to put together. Normally what I do is um, start with the reed and the mouthpiece. Yeah, we want to wet the reed. Normally in our mouth, that's usually wet enough. I haven't played yet today, so that's all I would do with that. And then the mouthpiece, I normally hold the mouthpiece and ligature in my left hand so that I can, with the thumb and forefinger, slide the ligature back and forward and forward and back on the on the hard rubber black mouthpiece and slide it forward so there's a gap between the ligature and the mouthpiece and slide the flat part of the reed onto the face of the mouthpiece, onto the flat part of the mouthpiece. And then uh, line up the tip of the reed so it's even with the tip of the mouthpiece. Uh, as exactly as you can by using your fingers without touching the tip of the reed because the tip of the reed is so thin it's easy to damage. Generally we line that up as close as we can and I'm not sure how this is coming out. That's pretty close there and side to side it needs to be even from side to side. Line it up as carefully as is practical and then tighten those thumb screws and I normally tighten my thumb screws um, fairly tight so it feels snug. So it would be uncomfortable to put more pressure on it with my fingers. So it's definitely snug. It's not, it's not, it's not as lightly as possible, that's for sure. There are many types of ligatures available. This one is just the standard, a standard Yamaha one, I believe that you can buy at the music store for about $13. Some of them are made to have the screws on the reed side and some are made to have the screws on top of the mouthpiece. You can tell by looking at the ligature and finding where the flat spot is. The flat spot on this ligature is right by the screws. The rest of it is round. So the flat spot goes on the reed and in this case the screws go on the bottom. 95% of all ligatures sold have the screws on the bottom. Sometimes students get in their head they want to have the screws on the top and then that might be fine if the ligature is made to put, be put on that way but you can check that very easily by looking at the ligature and, and seeing where the reed is supposed to go. And then tighten that baby down a little bit and then that assembly is good to go. When you pick up the saxophone itself, the best way to pick it up is by grabbing the bell or somewhere where you're not grabbing. We don't want to we don't want to hold the saxophone by grabbing anywhere where there are a lot of moving parts onto rods or keys. It can be dangerous because you can bend them. So the safest place is to grab by the bell and then the neck strap goes onto the eye on the back of the horn and the vocal socket when you take it out of the case will have an end plug or it should have a plastic plug sometimes they're wood or something else that goes into the top socket of the saxophone don't throw that away it's built to protect the bridge key that carries the movement from the register key up to the register key vent on the vocal. So that end plug has a purpose. Don't throw it away. Your students should be, should be taught to use that consistently. And put the end plug back in the case normally. Loosen the thumb screw and insert the vocal into the socket, turning, turning, turning. Don't force it and then tighten the thumb screw just lightly snug on this screw. 
and then the mouthpiece goes onto the bocal. One can one should put a little bit of cork grease on corks on any woodwind instrument about once a week. It uh, not only makes it easier to to slide the mouthpiece on and off, but it protects that that cork. The cork is a is a organic material. It's a kind of wood. It comes from trees, and that. Cork grease helps seal it up, just like when you varnish some shelves or something. It seals it up and helps protect that from moisture. And then you can put your mouthpiece on. Normally the mouthpiece, well, that's how we tune it, is to know how far on. But in most cases, most saxophone players have maybe a third of an inch, a little more than a quarter of an inch of cork showing, if you just want a ballpark estimate. That's normal. and then you should be good to go. Um, you will, when you set up and prepare to produce a tone, you will want to adjust the mouthpiece so that the, the mouthpiece tip opening is, is horizontal, so you don't have to turn your head sideways, and adjust the vocal position left to right so that the horn, you're able to rest all the weight of the saxophone on the strap, and the mouthpiece comes right to your mouth. My neck strap, you might notice, is a little different than yours. These are available commercially. Um, I'm not saying they're better or worse. They're just different. I, I also use a conventional neck strap much of the time. This one has the two, the two cords coming down from the neck and an additional one that comes under my left shoulder. And there's a strap that goes around my back that uh, so my back actually carries part of the weight that that is the practical advantage of of this particular one but neck straps generally they all work there are many 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 available if you look in catalogs or online a lot of ways to do that